Generally, the most efficient way to compute a to the power of k for square matrix A is to first diagonalize A. In this video, we'll see how and why diagonalizing a matrix can help us compute large powers of that matrix. I'll leave a link in the description to my video going over diagonalization if you need more of a review for that. In order to do this, connecting the diagonalized form of A with its power A to the K, we first need to connect their eigenvalues, which we do with this theorem. If K is a positive integer, and lambda is an eigenvalue of a matrix A, and X is a corresponding eigenvector, then lambda to the K is an eigenvalue of A to the K, and that same eigenvector is still a corresponding eigenvector for that new eigenvalue. This can easily be proven by induction, but this long string of equations gives you a good idea of why it's true. If we consider A to the K times X, well, we could take one factor of a out and pair it up with the x, which would leave k minus 1 factors of a behind. But since we've assumed that x is an eigenvector of a, a times x is just lambda times x. Then we could take that lambda out in front, and we could take another factor of a out to pair it with x. So now we have a to the k minus 2, and we have another a times x. But again, x is an eigenvector of a, so a times x is lambda times x. So again, we could take that lambda out, now we have lambda squared times a to the k minus 2 times x, and we could continue this process until we just have lambda to the k times x. And so in the end, we see that a to the k times x is just lambda to the k times x. And so lambda being an eigenvalue of a implies that lambda to the k is an eigenvalue of a to the k. For example, if we have this 3 by 3 matrix a, suppose we want to find the eigenvalues of a to the 8. Well, it's very easy to find the eigenvalues of a. Since a is a lower triangular matrix, its eigenvalues are just its diagonal entries, 3, 2, and 2. And so we can find the eigenvalues of a to the 8 by raising these eigenvalues to the power of 8. So those are the eigenvalues of a. Hence, the eigenvalues of a to the 8 are 3 to the 8, which is that, and 2 to the 8, which is that. Also, this is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 3, and so it's also an eigenvector corresponding to 3 to the 8 for this matrix, similarly for this eigenvector here. Now, what does this all have to do with computing powers of the matrix A? Well, let's suppose that A is a diagonalizable matrix. Then there exists some invertible matrix P, so that P inverse times A times P is a diagonal matrix. And of course, that diagonal matrix would contain the eigenvalues of A. Again, this just comes from the definition of diagonalizability. Now let's say we square everything. So we have P inverse AP squared, we have D squared, and as we know, squaring a diagonal matrix just has the effect of squaring its diagonal entries. Now on the left, P inverse AP squared, that's the same as P inverse AP times P inverse AP. But you can see that the P and the P inverse cancel out and would just leave behind P inverse A squared P, which we see there. So what we just saw is if we can diagonalize a matrix A, let's say the diagonalizing matrix is P, and once we diagonalize it, we call that result D, then D squared is actually just equal to A squared, but with that diagonalizing matrix P and its inverse multiplied on the right and left. So if I wanted to square A, I could just do the much easier thing of squaring D, the diagonal matrix it's similar to, and then just solving this equation for A squared, which would just require some matrix multiplication. And this argument holds in general. If A is a diagonalizable matrix and the diagonalizing matrix is P, then P inverse A to the K times P is just equal to D to the power of K. Hence, we can compute A to the K by multiplying d to the k 
on the left by p and on the right by p inverse because multiplying on the left by p cancels that out multiply on the right by p inverse cancels that out so we would just solve for a to the k by doing that so a could be a pretty ugly matrix and this turns multiplying it by itself a bunch of times into just exponentiating the eigenvalues in that diagonal matrix and then a couple quick matrix multiplications much better let's finish with a quick example now, of course, there are still large powers involved, so this is still the sort of thing you'd want a calculator for, but the computational complexity is definitely reduced. So here's our matrix A. Turns out A is diagonalizable. You could find its eigenvectors and construct the diagonalizing matrix P and then find its inverse. There is P inverse. And if we diagonalize A, we get this diagonal matrix whose diagonal entries are the eigenvalues of A. So this is all work you'd have to do if it wasn't given, but here it is. So now, how do we compute a to the power of 12? Well, I definitely don't wanna multiply this matrix by itself 12 times. Much easier to take the matrix P and then multiply by D to the power of 12 and then multiply by P inverse. Now it's just two matrix multiplications. Doing this multiplication, we arrive at this matrix. This is a to the power of 12. So that's how to use diagonalization to compute large powers of a matrix. Again, if you have a diagonalizable matrix A and you're trying to compute a to the power of K, all you have to do is take the diagonalizing matrix P, multiply it by that similar diagonal matrix D, to the desired power of k and multiply that by p inverse and that's a to the power of k let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more thanks for watching stressed out sweetie i'm stressed out sounds like you've been stressed out tell me what you're stressed about stressed out honey i've been stressed out lately don't know what's what don't know what i'm stressed about Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out Sounds like you've been stressed out Tell me what you're stressed about